So now we need to render it. We've been rendering frame 72. Who's that? No, oh, we lost all our cool images. Oh no, because we're on the wrong thing. All right. So we've been rendering frame 72. So let's go to 72. Go to frame as any. Um, out here, we need to make a another one of these. This time for our white water. This one, make sure that the velocity blur is on. Go grab the result, the white water cache. Here. There you go. And make sure that your mantra node is rendering everything, meaning under objects, so it's render star. Should still be. And that should do it. Uh, actually, no, it shouldn't do it. We need to make our material. There is a whitewater material in here. Um, I don't know where it is. I'm just going to type it in. There it is. So it is a volume shader, which makes sense because it is literally a volume. It, it's not really that fancy. It's um, <clears throat> the basic white or sh uh, volume shader with just a couple of extra things that we're going to talk about that are a little interesting. So the whitewater should have the white water shader, of course. So let's see what that looks like. 13 days. Mark your calendars. Now we may need to up the density depending on how it shows up. So are we seeing it at all? I don't know. As usual, let's just blow it out to just say that we're seeing anything. Okay, so it is working. It's doing something here. So apparently it takes quite a bit to get this white water to show up. A surprising amount. I was kind of hoping I'd see it a little bit closer to the, the rock, but it doesn't seem to be the case. So we may need to be more aggressive in our settings back on the the cat, the uh, source rather. Not going to do that just yet. But if we needed to get to see more white water, more places, you'd want to like, you know, lower this threshold on the vorticity or and or on the acceleration. I still don't think we need the curvature. We might even need to lower the speed range on here. But for now, it is it is literally working, though. Um, so that's cool. I'll let that finish, actually. Um, the more dense we make it, the brighter it gets, also. Um, again, the white water, rendering white water as a volume is an, an imperfect solution to the complicated task of rendering millions of little micro bubbles, billions probably. But it'll get the job done. So that's cool. Uh, what else we got on here? Shadow scale is 0.5, that's good. This is a, you know, this is, this is water droplets. It is not a thick, dense amount of like smoke or something that blocks light. This tends to transmit light, much like the snow, in the snow lesson of Applied Houdini, we want the shadow scale to be lower so that light can transmit through it more easily. Uh, similarly, the scattering phase, I think, can probably be like uh, some positive number. That again means that if light is behind this volume, which it really probably won't ever be, uh, but you can see it did make a difference, that versus uh, that. It's be much brighter. It will be somewhat brighter this way. This means that it is brighter when there's light behind it because there isn't light behind it. It's going to be slightly darker. But that's okay. Uh, the water is white, or the color is white. Now this is interesting though. We have reflect intensity and reflect roughness. How do you reflect off the surface of a volume? We've never done that before, not even in the volumes lessons. Well, we can. We can through some clever stuff involving our favorite friends, sine distance fields. So I'm going to snapshot this guy Oop, like that. Cool. And I will pause it. So going back to our whitewater cache and looking at this, it is a fog volume. It is voxels that say, I have density here and I don't here. So there's ones, let's say, or maybe twos even, the voxel values, I mean. And then as we get towards the edge, they are less and less. They go to zero. 
Now there's a thing called a gradient. A gradient, so actually I lied, we're not using a sine distance field for this, but we are using other volume operations. A gradient says make me a vector field that points in the direction of the values getting smaller. So our favorite friend here, the pig head, if I turn this into a, well, I guess I will use a, uh, I will use a, an SDF here to demonstrate. If I have this, these are scalar values. They're just, they're not directions, they're not vectors. They are just values. Now there's this thing here called VDB analysis, which will say, take, give me the gradient. So take a scalar field and give me a vector. The vectors, again, are pointing in the direction of the values getting smaller. Now we know that for the pig head, or for SDFs, that the values are storing their distance to the surface. So as we get away from the surface, the values are getting smaller. Or, or they're getting bigger, actually. And they're getting smaller the further we go into the pig head. So this is a prime candidate to have vectors be generated from this. So if I take a volume slice of that thing, and I do a volume trail, just I just want to see these vectors. We certainly have vectors now. They point outwards. Now, what does this look like, though? These look like normals, don't they? This pig head... This is what the normals on the pig head would have looked like. They would have looked like something that sticks out perpendicular away from the surface. That's what you get with a gradient. You're getting these vectors that point out away from the surface. Now that's with an SDF. But this is going to be true for our regular thing here too. When we have these volumes, these are, again, dense in the middle and get less as we go out. Now, that's kind of the opposite. With a the pig, they got bigger as they go out. So for this, we're going to actually want to reverse it. Also, let's, uh, let's give it a name. We'll call it gradient. So now we have a field called gradient. Um, we can use a VDB combine to flip it. This will basically just multiply everything times some number. So you can see now they point out away from this. So we've essentially made a vector, or rather a normal field for these volumes. So that's really interesting because the shader wants that. It's not just a co some crazy coincidence that we're talking about this. Imagine that. Um, it doesn't usually come up with a lot of kinds of volumetric rendering. You would not usually want that. We don't want that for smoke or fire or anything else. We want them to just be particulate in the air. The thinking, the feeling with the basic whitewater shader is that because this is representing lots of little spheres, lots of little bubbles that do reflect light strongly in a certain direction as opposed to just dust, um, that this is looking for that. If you look inside the shader, it's looking for a gradient field. So that's what we're giving it. I'm merging it into here. We have a density and a gradient field now. So it's going to look for that. By default, it doesn't look much different, if it looks different at all. Also, I should say, you can shift, click, and hold here to just uh, focus your rendering power on that area. But if I were to start blowing this up, now it does look different. And what looks different is that it is brightening oops, only the parts of it that are reflecting the light. So not everything got brighter, although it is blown out. So It's basically shading this as if it was like some piece of geometry, just in the certain areas that are reflecting the light based on those normal calculations, based on the gradient analysis. We now essentially have normals. And the basic whitewater shader uses that to do a reflection and feeds that, or combines that, I should say, with the regular volume uh, calculation. So it kind of just gives it a little bit feeling of like mass, if you will, or like solidness, I should say, compared to what it had been. So I'll just let this go back to the whole thing.
So that's pretty cool. It's a clever little way. Again, Whitewater is all about all these clever little ways to try to approximate the way this would work, the way that Whitewater would be simulated, the way it would be rendered. Um, it's not perfect, and it tends to hold up better at a distance, but it is uh, still a pretty cool way of doing it. So I could say that this is definitely too intense right now. This The whole thing could probably go back down to like 10 so, you know, we don't want the, the white to be completely blown out, if possible. I mean, it might be completely blown out in the real world. I mean, depending on how you film something. So, you know, your mileage may vary. Ugh, I really wish there was more density. I'm kind of surprised that these numbers have to be so high to make it point to show up. Um, but in any case, so that works. Um, I'm going to snapshot this too. Stop that. No, actually, I'll just stop it entirely. So I have to go to work now. <laughs> I'm recording this in the morning. So what I want to do before I head out for the day is on the Whitewater solver itself, or Whitewater sim, I should say, I want this to be to go down. I want this to be a higher resolution, so 0 0.005. This will make you know eight times as many points. That doesn't mean it's going to be eight times as dense, but it will make more points, which will give us sharper edges around our uh, our volume rasterizing later on. So that'll be nice. And as I pointed out also, it would be nice, I think, to just see more whitewater, probably. So I'm going to go back here and see what what's the best way to improve to see more without blowing everything up. So if I go down to 1.5, we have way too much stuff. So if I go down to 1.8, that's not bad. We could try that. Um, before we do go that way, I'm going to say, what if we went down here? That's pretty good. We might even want to come down here. See, by doing this, we're encouraging it to make more points in those areas or to make the volume more dense and therefore scattering more points in those areas. So that's pretty cool. That should make a lot more points for us. That should yield more density and more interesting shapes later on. So let's say that that is good. And I'm going to say back here in the out, I wanted to redo the white water and then also render it. I'm just going to overwrite my uh, thing here. You know, if we wanted to do a different, we have to be careful because our, our images here are tied to the current version number. So if you wanted to not actually update the version number of our cache, you might make a separate version number for the controls for the images here and to have like version, geometry version, render version, and, and split them out. Or you can just do what I do, which is I'll just throw like a, I just throw something in here and just get rid of it later. In any case, I do want to overwrite it this time. So that's it. Uh, render with HQ. Um, I think I also needed to remember on the Mantra node that I want to have motion blur this time. So keep that on in the HQ render. Probably should have done that in the first place. And that should do it. So I'm going to render this out. And hopefully this looks like something we can be happy with later on. Although I suspect that the density will probably be too high now that we've increased the density source on the whitewater source, but didn't actually change it on here. Um, so, but let's just see what happens. And away we go.